Hi, I'm Mitch Mockey, president of Gopher Broke National Education Center. We tell the story of the Japanese American soldiers of World War II, how they, despite the racism and discrimination that they faced at home, went on to fight in Europe and become the most highly decorated unit of their size in American military history. And in the Pacific, would help to end the war nearly two years earlier than otherwise would have happened. We stand in strong opposition to the anti-Asian hate which is spreading across our nation. We are painfully aware that anti-Asian hate is not new. It has been in our nation from the time that the first Asian immigrants came to America. What also is not new are the stories of how Asian Americans have proven time after time that being an American is not a matter of the color of one's skin, but rather the content of one's heart. Kazuo Masuda was born in 1918 in Orange County, California. He was one of 11 children. Both his parents were Japanese immigrants who had come to America at the turn of the century and had been in America for 20 years by the time Kazuo was born. Kazuo was a typical second-generation Japanese American. He spoke Japanese at home with his parents and English at school with his teachers and friends. At home, he would eat rice and other Japanese food. At school, it was hamburgers and hot dogs. As with many of his generation, Kazuo knew he was an American with Japanese roots. December 7, 1941, the Imperial Nation of Japan attacked a naval installation at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, thrusting the United States into World War II. Japanese Americans wondered immediately what would happen to us. Would we be treated like the American citizens we were? or would we be treated like the enemy because we shared the same ethnicity? We received our answer two months later when President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which created the underpinnings by which nearly 120,000 individuals of Japanese ancestry, two-thirds of whom were American citizens by birth, would be forcibly removed from the west coast of the continental United States and made to live in concentration camps for the next two to four years of their lives. Kazuo's father, Gensuke Masuda, was separated from the family by the FBI and taken to Fort Missoula, Montana. The rest of the family was among those sent to the camp in Gila River, Arizona. Japanese Americans lost their homes, their farms, their businesses and their jobs. But most of all, what was lost was their sense of place at the American table of citizenship. Despite the fact that his family was incarcerated and denied their constitutional rights, Kazuo, three of his brothers, and thousands of other young Japanese American men chose to serve in the United States Army and to risk their lives halfway around the world in defending liberty and justice. Eventually, Kazuo found himself in Italy, promoted to sergeant. After engaging in several battles, he was asked, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you fighting for liberty when your own family is being incarcerated? Kazuo's answer was the answer that many of the Japanese American soldiers would have given. Because this is the only way I know that my family can have a chance in America. Right or wrong, agree with him or not, Sergeant Masuda understood that in 1943, 44, and 45, loyalty needed to be demonstrated in blood. Two weeks later, after answering why he was fighting, on August 27, 1944, Sergeant Masuda was killed in Italy, fighting for his nation, the United States of America. His family grieved the loss of their son as they remained incarcerated behind barbed wire. Sergeant Masuda could not have known how prophetic his words would be. 43 years after the end of World War II, a federal piece of legislation 
was working its way through the United States Congress. The bill provided a presidential apology and monetary reparations for those affected by Executive Order 9066. September 1987, the bill passed the U.S. House of Representatives. April 1988, the bill passed the U.S. Senate. Now, all that was needed was the signature of one last person, the President of the United States. In 1988, the President was none other than Ronald Reagan, a very conservative President whose own administration had been fighting against the concept of an apology and reparations. Many believed there was no way President Reagan would sign the bill. For those who remember Ronald Reagan, whether you agreed with his policies, most would agree that he was a great communicator. He had the ability to tell stories that would touch people's hearts and move them in certain directions. But the opposite was true of Ronald Reagan. If you could tell him a story which would touch his heart, you could have a great advocate working with you. The question was, what story could be told to the president to help him understand the racism and discrimination on a personal level. We go back to the end of World War II. As the war ended and the American concentration camps began to close, Coswell's sister, Mary, left camp ahead of her family to check on the family's home in Santa Ana, California. Upon arriving at her home city, she was confronted by four self-styled patriots who challenged her right to be there, hurled racial slurs at her, and threatened her with bodily harm. This encounter was emblematic of the type of hateful treatment that the Masuda family was to experience. The army, realizing that this was a PR fiasco, that the family of one of its own fallen soldiers couldn't return safely to their home, sent out a contingent of army officers to bestow the Distinguished Service Cross to the Masuda family. Leading the officers was a four-star general, Vinegar Joe Stilwell, who had been vocal against the anti-Japanese American hate and violence. The ceremony took place on April 8, 1945, on the steps of the Masuda home. The medal was presented to Kazuo's sister. Later that day, at a United America Day rally, various officers addressed the gathered audience. General Stilwell stated, the amount of money, the color of one's skin, do not make a measure of Americanism. Sergeant Masuda was a better American than any of us here today. Among the other officers was a young white American captain named Ronald Reagan. Captain Reagan addressed the gathered guests by saying, Blood that has soaked into the sands of a beach is all of one color. America stands unique in the world, the only country not founded on race, but on a way, on an ideal. Captain Reagan concluded his remarks by addressing Coswell's parents directly, Mr. and Mrs. Masuda, for what your son Coswell did. Thanks. The story was related to President Reagan in the 1980s. His response was to say that he remembered what the Japanese American soldiers had done for America. On August 10, 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act, granting Japanese Americans a formal apology and monetary reparations. In doing so, America's promise was upheld. The promise that in our nation, no one is to be judged by the color of one's skin, the nation of one's origin, or the God whom one chooses to worship. Anti-Asian hate was wrong then. It is wrong now. As we remember Sergeant Kazuo Masuda, let us pledge ourselves to the ideal that liberty and justice for all is still the American way.